Hey everyone, Gil Gross here, and it is time for a preview of Matteo Berrettini versus Hubert Hurkacz in the 2021 Wimbledon semi-final. Uh, looking forward to this one. It feels very fresh. It feels very different, which uh, which we like. Hurkacz there in a semi-final for the first time, Berrettini for the second time, and uh, should be a good battle. Uh, remember, I will be going live after the conclusion of the second semi-final. This one is first up on center court. Djokovic Shapovalov is up second on center court, so I'll be live after after the Novak against Dennis match. Here's my preview of Berrettini and Hercac. The head-to-head -head is 1-0 in favor of the poll. They played in Miami 2019. Two years later, Hercac went on to win that tournament. Uh, it was straightforward for Hercac, 6-4, 6-3. And 2019 was a great season for Berrettini. He really played well in 2019. So Hercac didn't beat... I'd say that Hercotch didn't beat 2020 Berrettini, which was not a good Berrettini. He beat 2019 Berrettini. So I'm impressed by that. I'm not going to put too much weight into it, but I'm just saying I'm impressed by that. Uh, but it's just one match, just one match. So don't, don't uh, read too much into that. Berrettini also beat him in Australian Open qualifying in 2018. Let's talk about the serve return battle. These guys are both big. They both have really big serves. And they want to play quick points. They don't mind playing long points. It's not a problem for either of them. But they're trying to impose their wills. So let's talk about serve return. I think I know who the better returner is in this matchup. I do. I, I think I know it. On the eye test, just off of how I view them, it's Hercotch. And I, I don't have much to say about that. But I did go to the career statistics just to try to back up my own observations, and it did back up my observations. So career win percentage on return points for Mateo is 36%. Career win percentage for Hercotch is 37.9%. And that might seem small, but remember, we're talking about, I think, I'm pretty sure hundreds of thousands of points. So you're not going to see... Those, those tiny margins are really not tiny margins because the sample size is enormous. So uh, it's statistically significant in my opinion. Uh, to, I think Hercoc is just better at absorbing the pace, a little bit more nimble out of his split step when it comes to the defensive returning. And the second serve return, which I think is key, he does a lot more with his backhand return on the second serve, where he takes it early and, and very uh, more aggressive and more penetrating on a consistent basis, which I think can be a real key here. So now, who is the better server? Well, I've said time and time again that Berrettini is the hottest server in tennis. All throughout grass court season, I've said that. But interestingly enough, the numbers haven't really backed that up at Wimbledon. And don't get me wrong, if we're going to isolate the shot, just the serve itself, Berrettini is bigger, Berrettini is better, uh, I believe that to be true, but that's not really what it's about. Of course, it's about winning those first serve points, and it's a certain style of point, so, so let's talk about that. First, um, basically, so what I'm saying, just to backtrack, who's the better like serve plus one aggression player? That's kind of the question here because Berrettini's serve is a little bit better. But if you dig into the numbers, it's pretty eye-opening. Um, okay, let's just go on who's been broken more. Well, Berrettini was broken three times against FAA, one time against Ivashka, one time against Pela. Uh, n n zero times against Bedne, and zero times against Van de Zanschkulp, but... Uh, actually had to save nine break points in that match. So seemed pretty fortunate not to be broken at least once there because uh, he saved nine break points. Her catch was broken zero times in the opening three rounds against Musetti, Giron, Bublik, then was broken three times against Medvedev, who's one of the best returners in tennis, and then once against Federer. Her catch has had a more difficult path, in my opinion. I think he's faced better competition than Berrettini, who's had a really favorable draw, yet Matteo has been the one who has been broken 
one, you know, more times by one. Then you look at, well, let's look at the elite opponents because that's what really matters. And Hercoc won a higher percentage of first serve points against Federer than Berrettini did, excuse me, against Medvedev because I'm not considering Federer an elite returner, especially in the conditions that, that he was in that match. So Medvedev, uh, Hercoc won a higher percentage of first serve points against Medvedev than Berrettini did against FAA. And I consider Medvedev to be a better returner than Felix. So none of these things are really pointing to Berrettini having some kind of big edge in terms of the potency of his first serve and his offense behind it. And I think the reason for that is that Hercoc's game just feels extremely high percentage behind his first serve and the things he's doing from the baseline. And... I don't know, you know, I think I think Hercoc has entered this level of serve return dominance right now where I feel like he's kind of in the land of Zverev Medvedev. Um obviously he's got the booming serve with the good size. I think you know, six foot five, six foot six uh range for, for Hubi. Uh yet He's a super talented returner of serve. He's he's reminding me of Zverev Medvedev a little bit. And Mateo is, by the way, one in five against those two, um, which I did look up. So serve return, it's always the most unpredictable dynamic of a tennis match, the hardest to predict because, again, it's really hard to know what that dynamic is going to look like until the two players hit the court and actually do the damn thing. My weapon against your weapon. Mano y mano, that's the beauty of tennis. Berrettini's serve against Hercoc's return. What's that going to look like? Hard to predict. But I'm just going to say this. None of the numbers really back up the idea that Berrettini is going to win because he is going to just basically serve a lot better than Hercoc and is going to be more dominant on first serve, and then is going to make the returns in play more than Hercoc, and just play those percentages. And that's the way he beats so many of these opponents. They can't return his serve. They can't. So Berrettini wins, and that could happen here. Um, they can't return his serve, and Berrettini can return their serve and scrap out some some breaks with, uh, with his ability to, uh, to move behind his return and look for his big forehand. So it's just what level is Hercoc's return? So let's talk about just the percentages. So now let's move past the serve return, which I think there's an argument to be made that Hercoc is right there, if not better, than, than Berrettini. But let's move past that. Hubert doesn't have big power. So the way he attacks and the way he's playing from uh, off the bounce, uh, his ground stroke game, he's using his depth, fantastic depth, taking away time, and redirecting the ball extremely often, and then coming forward and using net play to finish points off. And it feels very easy for him. And the grass is essential for him to do this work because on other surfaces, if he played the game that I just described to you, the ball would lose too much speed on the surface and it would sit up and great movers and great defenders, they'd be able to get to the ball. But grass will always help a player who is taking time away, hitting with good depth, and redirecting the ball because then it's more about where you're putting the ball in the court and less about the power required to hit through the court. The court will help your power. The court will aid that. That's why you see, I think the best examples are almost on the women's side. That's why Kerber's great on grass. That's why Radvanska's great on grass. But that's why M Manorino is good on grass, for example. Um... You know, these are the players that I like to use as an example just because they are extreme versions. They don't they don't have the massive power. It's take time away, redirect, hit with great depth. And in Hercoc's case, come forward. That's how you're finishing off. And the main observations I have is it feels so easy for Hubie right now. It, he's so within himself. It just doesn't really look like he's going to miss. Uh, and the percentages just seem so high. 
So now let's talk about what Mateo does. Well, for Mateo, it's still about the forehand power. It doesn't matter what surface he's on, grass, clay, again, just doesn't matter. It's about the big forehand and just how overwhelming that shot is on any surface. And I'd say what Berrettini does is more unplayable than what Hercotch does. Berrettini's going to hit more balls where it's like, oh, too good. That's impossible. Nobody in the world can get to that. Nobody in the world can defend that. Hats off. You got me. I think Berrettini is going to get more of that. But I also think while it's more unplayable, it's also more mistake prone. I think we saw FAA put Mateo under pressure and a little bit of vulnerability was revealed as the unforced error count kind of piled up a little bit. Uh, just by virtue of FAA being a, a better returner than the opponents Berrettini has faced over the course of not only Wimbledon, but Queens as well. FAA was just a, a better returner, made those balls in the court, has good movement, and the Berrettini forehand was good, but you saw it sometimes misfiring. And I also think the height of bounce and the court speed doesn't help Berrettini as much as uh, it doesn't help. Berrettini as much as Clay would with the high bounce, extra time to really whip that that forehand and use the high RPMs to get that heavy bounce off the court. And I think when it's sitting up there for him, up high for him, it just seems like a more high margin, consistent shot, a little bit less prone to error. But when he's hitting it from a lower contact point and he has a little bit less time to wind it up, I just think it misses a little bit more. So the difference between Hercotch and Berrettini behind their serves when they're playing aggressive tennis, to me, is that Hercotch's game feels a little bit more high percentage. And what you've just heard me make is a case for the poll. Let me make a quick case for Berrettini now. Obviously, his serve might be his serve is better. So the question is, will that, as an isolated stroke, it is better? Will that result? in an advantage in the serve return dynamic, getting more free points than Hercotch and being able to save those key points, those break points in a in a way where it's easier and more stress-free than Hercotch, saving break points with aces, service winners, and serve plus one winners as he's done so well over the course of the last three, four weeks. Uh, he also has the point finishing weapon from behind the baseline that Hubie doesn't have. And Hubie can get a little bit passive and doesn't really trust any weapons from the back of the court the same way that Berrettini trusts his own forehand. That could be that could be interesting. In the tense moments, Berrettini is just not hesitant at all. He goes after that forehand. It doesn't matter what the score is. That's what's so great about his mentality. Uh, Berrettini, you know, he, again, he deserves more credit for his mental because... It doesn't matter what the scoreboard is. He plays the same way, and that's really hard to do. Another thing is that Berrettini protects his backhand so well on grass. That's one thing that's better on grass than clay uh, because he uses that slice. And remember I talked about in the quarterfinal preview, I thought that Federer could use his backhand slice to Hercotch's backhand to, uh, to gain a bit of an advantage. And the reason why that was a non-starter is because the— uh, that tactic is supposed to set up the forehand, and Federer didn't have the forehand to set up there. It was uh, it was not a good forehand. So um, I'll be interested to see if that dynamic will or will not play out against uh, another player who should be looking to execute that. And he did that. Berrettini did that against FAA in the baseline rallies, in the backhand pattern. Again, I think Hercotch has a pretty flat backhand that he doesn't want to hit up on the ball. He'd much rather have a higher contact point on that backhand. So Berrettini's slice, which has looked really good, by the way, recently. Berrettini's slice, get him to hit up on it, and then find the forehand. That could be a key pattern for Mateo. Ultimately, here's what I think this match will come down to. Who is going to play fewer loose service games? And for me, the answer is Harkach on that. Who is going to steal a few points in a tie break? Most likely on second serve return points. And again, X factor, who hits a better second serve return on the backhand side, especially in my opinion, that's Harkach. Um, 
that is going to be, I think, the, the two main keys to the match. But again, those two things, if the answer is Berrettini, which they could be, I think Matteo wins. Uh, mental, by the way, quick note on mental. I feel like Berrettini is in an unprecedented spot. He's a favorite right now in a major semifinal. Hercoc is also in an unprecedented spot. But when two guys are unfamiliar, I do kind of like that underdog mentality. I think that's a little bit advantageous. And Hercoc, with the way he came into this tournament, it just kind of feels like he's playing with house money. So I'm going to pick Hubert Hercoc in four sets. I think he's just reached that Zverev Medvedev level of serve return co combo. I think he is the guy who is ready to return Mateo's serve. It takes a great opponent to be able to do that. And I just think Hercoc will actually be able to do it. And uh, I just love the high percentage pressure, high percentage pressure that Hubert Hercoc is putting on all of his opponents right now. And I feel good about, uh, about picking him here. Enjoy the matches, everyone. Again, I will be live after the second semifinal. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.